So we'll be looking at Psalm 1 for next actually couple of weeks. Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 uh, next couple of weeks as an introduction to the whole book. Uh, the Psalms is a collection of 150 uh, individual Psalms, songs. So we'll be looking at this. Can you imagine a world without trees? So Theodore Gazelle did in 1970, 1971. So that is 50 years ago. I know it's uh, 50 years ago plus two days. So 50 years ago, Theodore Gazelle, who is known as Dr. Seuss, wrote a book, The Lorax. The Lorex tells a story, this book, if you have read the book when you're little, or if, if you remember from the motion picture, Lorex, it tells a story concerning the danger of human destruction of the natural environment. So likewise, without the righteous, we face the danger of human destruction of the spiritual environment. The book of Psalms begins with a blessing or a description of the man who is blessed. The first Psalm uses a simile to give us a picture of this blessed man. So whenever you see the word like, you know, it's a figurative language. So Psalms are like giant sequoias in that they are 2,000 years old, old or more. The California redwood trees live 1,200 or 2,200 years or more. So. Historians of the ancient Near East estimate that David, King David, probably lived around 1000 BCE, so, or BC, that's 1000 years before Jesus was born. So what we have in the Old Testament is a collection of 150 Psalms that are as old as the California redwood tree, some of the giant sequoias. The name David appears in 73 Psalms, which is almost half of the book. Yes, we're going to get into the authorship because you'll notice that there are Psalms that wrote about the temple. And you know that historical David um, prepared the construction of the temple. He didn't actually build it. So the Psalms were written... 2000, from 2,500 years ago to 2,000. And some of them actually could have been written by David himself. But we'll get into the details of the authorship later. But as we come back and consider, think about, think about the Psalms 1 and 2, these two Psalms serve as introduction for the whole book. So the Hebrew title of Psalms is Tehillim which means praise, praises, or hymns. So it's easy to remember. Think about Psalms, and Hebrew word for Psalms is Tehillim, and today's message title is like, like a tree. So the Psalms gives this, starts with this figurative language of trees, and Psalms, the, the, the meaning of the word Psalms in Hebrew is praises. So Tehillim, that is the title of actually the Psalms in Hebrew. And Greek title is Psalmoi, which is closer to English word. So Tehillim, praises or hymns, it has a meaning of ode or song, or singing accompanied by an instrument 
uh, particularly the harp that was used during the um, time of King David. And there's a separate word for song, which is a sheer, but you know, that's not the word we are look, uh, looking at. But you know, the, the, what we know about the Psalms is that it's, it's referring to the praises and hymns that people of the Old Testament have composed and sang or according to the instruments. So we can say in the modern days, Psalms is a worship book for the people of God to be used in their worship. In fact, Apostle Paul in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18b, or second part of verse 18 and verse 19, uh, say about the Psalms like this. He said, Be filled with the Holy, be filled with the Holy Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. So if you're wondering, what does it look like for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit? We have the answer right here in Ephesians chapter 5. It is to sing, to read, and to reflect, meditate, and pray the Psalms, you know, in your life, you know, and using them, you know, for your worship service, both public service as well as your private devotions. So you are invited to the literary temple in the Psalms, as one of the commentators described what the Psalms, you know, is the book of Psalms like. So it's described as a literary temple. So you enter the Psalms, the book of Psalms, to meet with God. So Psalms, Psalms 1 and 2 talk about Torah, the law of, the, the law of God, Messiah, the anointed one in Psalm 2, and the kingdom of God. So these are the topics that we'll be talking about this month as a way of, to help you to read the Psalms. So, and also these are the themes that we need to properly interpret the Psalms, the rest of the book. So we'll consider these themes this month as an introduction to the book and as a rule of interpretation. So let me ask you this question. Where do you see trees in the Bible? I think um, that we, if you remember the, our public reading of scripture, that we probably saw it. But you see trees in the Bible from the beginning of the Bible. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. I know um, we actually heard, Carlos read Genesis chapter 2, which is another account of creation. But in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, it says, and God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their, their seed, each according to its kind on earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plant, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So we see trees in the Bible from the beginning, from the very first chapter of the Bible. And where else? Revelation chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. This is the last chapter of the Bible. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb, and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So when we read the Bible, when we look at the Bible, the story of the Bible 
begins and ends with trees. So trees serve as a bookmark of the revelation of God. I mean, that's the image. That's a figure of language. You know, I mentioned that you enter into the literary temple of God. So the Bible itself begins and ends with this beautiful picture of a garden, the creation, and the new creation. The tree is a visible and tangible sign of the life force which God, the Creator, has planted throughout nature. And trees mark the places where water flows. I mean, that is the image that we see in Psalm 1. So today, this morning, I want to actually just help you understand this imagery of tree throughout the Bible. So, you know, this is something that I want all of us to remember as we begin our study in the book of Psalms. So that in the Bible, we see the symbolism of the tree develop in three ways. The symbolism of the tree. First, the tree of life. Second, the tree of the kingdom of God, and third, the tree of the cross. Let's consider these separately. First, tree of life. And this is the passage that we uh, listened this morning. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. And the Lord God planted a garden of Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's the symbolism, the first symbolism of the tree that is, that is developed in the Bible. So in the tree of life has to do with the fall of man. And we're going to get to this uh, next couple of weeks as we consider the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. How the creation, as God has intended, was a beautiful, abundant creation. This orientation was good, but because of disobedience, because of the way of the wicked, you know, we experience disorientation. And we're going to talk about that um, next week. But as you think about the psalm, right? The title, the message of the title is like a tree. So the symbolism of tree in the Bible, the first is the tree of life. And this tree of life, as we have read, is found in the beginning of the story of creation. It is also found in the end of the story of salvation or the story of the beginning of the new creation. So second symbolism, the second way that the tree, symbolism of trees develop in the Bible is the tree of the kingdom of God. The tree of life and the tree of the kingdom of God. So let's look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 through 32. It says, he put another parable this is Jesus, before them, saying, The kingdom of, God, kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches. So, the second symbolism of tree in the Bible is as the kingdom of God, the tree of the kingdom of God. And when we look at Psalm 2, where the kings of the nations rage, and when we read the Old Testament, you know, we'll be looking at how the kingdom is described as a tree. But here, we just read a parable that's told by Jesus, because Jesus is actually 
continuing this theme and he is telling us what the tree represents. The tree represents the kingdom of God, the tree of the kingdom of God. And finally, the symbolism of tree in the Bible is developed as the tree of the cross. And this kind of goes back to the tree of life. So Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 22. It says, And if a man has committed a crime punishable by death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree. So what we have is, is the instruction or the command in the Old Testament about the capital punishment. If a man, if someone has committed a crime that is punishable by death, that is worthy of death, then that person is to be put to death and you hang him on a tree. So the tree represents judgment, curse, or condemnation. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. So the third symbolism that we see of the tree in the Bible develops is there's a tree of the cross. because of sin, because of the disobedience, because the first human parents have rebelled against God and disobeyed His command. And instead of eating the fruit from the tree of life, they ate the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And according to God's command, they committed a crime that is punishable by death. And instead of Adam and Eve dying and their descendants being condemned to hell forever, what we have in the story of the Bible of salvation is this beautiful story of rescue or salvation that Jesus Christ fulfills. And, and King David actually wrote a psalm, wrote a thanksgiving, a song of thanksgiving. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 33, when the ark of the Lord goes into the temple, he writes this song of thanksgiving. And towards the end of that song, this is what it says. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. The book of Psalms begins with a blessing or description of the man who is blessed. The first Psalm uses a simile like a tree to give us a picture of this blessed man. The first two Psalms do not have the title like other psalms because they serve as an introduction to the whole collection of psalms. And this picture of blessed man is none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Son of David. The psalms are the songs of Jesus because they are praises of the Son of God. All the laments confessions, praises, and prayers in the Psalms are about Jesus, are fulfilled in Jesus, and are experienced by the followers of Jesus. The people of God in the Old Testament period and the New Testament period find their songs in the Psalms. And I just read the song that David, King David wrote before the temple, as the temple is dedicated. So we see David's prayers before the temple. 
is made, is built. But also we see prayers, Israel's prayers, after the temple destruction. So the Psalms contain the praises and prayers and laments of the emotional life of what the people of God go through on a daily basis. There are morning prayers, there are evening prayers, there are thanksgivings, and that is the invitation I'd like to extend it to you. But before we you know, end the message, I want to remind you again, you know, what is the purpose? What is the ultimate purpose of the book of Psalms? And it is none other than the Hebrew title, the Psalms, or the Tehillim, which means praises. So that is the ultimate purpose of creation and new creation. As we read, as we read in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 33, that all the trees of the forest sing for the joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. And that is the ultimate goal, that we live our lives, that we are saved, that we follow Jesus ultimately for the praises of our God. So before I uh, lead us into prayer, let me ask you a question for you to think about for next week. Can you imagine a world without truth? 